Shout out to the Brits. Shout out to the Brits, shout out. <laughs> I don't know what that store is back there. I think they do, they work on English cars, old English cars, they restore them. Okay, we're almost home. First run in the Hoka Mach 3s. I will say, I did not run in the Mach 2s. So I don't have experience with the Mach 2s and I won't be able to compare, but I'll give you my full thoughts in the studio for the Mach 3s. So far, rocking and rolling. Are they a tempo shoe? Are they a long run shoe? Are they an interval day shoe? You're about to find out, you're about to find out. Okay, almost home. We're home. They're playing basketball. Hi, Michael. Oh, there he is, precious. And we're back into the studio for my first impressions of the Hoka One One Mach 3. There it is in my hands, loving the colorway. And yes, not my full review, that'll happen after 50 miles. Okay, so it's a neutral, all right, let's do the test. The tw oh yeah, definitely neutral, neutral road running shoe from Hoka. I will say the outer, uh, sorry, the outsole is definitely not made for the snow. I survived out there today, but it is it was a little bit of a slick ride. So the outsole, don't take it on too much ice or snow. All right, let's dive into a few specs before giving you my thoughts on how it performed today on the first run. So the drop, we're looking at 24 millimeter stack height in the heel, 19 millimeter in the forefoot for a five millimeter drop. Uh, drop for the ladies version, it's 22 millimeter and 17 millimeter. So still a five millimeter drop. For the men's size nine, we're looking at 8.6 ounces or 245 grams. There it is on your screen. Pretty lightweight shoe. I must say I'm, I'm pleased with the weight of this Hoka Mach 3. Okay, diving into the upper. It's a mesh upper, all right, mesh upper. And it's I'm gonna put it in the simplified category for uppers. There's not a lot going on here. Uh, for example, there's no overlays. What are overlays? It's the rubber or plastic that is placed on, basically on top, it, it would be placed on top of the mesh to help give the shoe, uh, the upper of the shoe a little more uh, structure or rigidity. Um, so for example, as you can see here, I'm just like pressing, pressing all over the upper. It's very malleable, really no structure to the upper. So if you prefer a shoe that has that structure, this probably this Mach 3 is probably not for you. For example, this is very, very different than an Asics or a Mizuno, all right? And what else uh, I will say, oh yeah, and very comfortable heel counter. I was actually pretty surprised at how comfortable the heel counter was. No slipping despite the heel counter being, once again, pretty malleable. One slight situation is I don't have a very wide foot, but, uh, and this is the case with other Hoka's as well. It doesn't really bother me. And by the end of today's run, uh, I had forgotten about it, but my pinky toe on both shoes, right and left shoe, my pinky toe was 
pressing. Not, it wasn't pushing through. It wasn't like too hard. Oh, sorry about that. So my pinky toe was pressing against this outer wall of the shoe. Something to keep in mind if you have wider, a wider foot that uh, I, I think this has been an issue with some other Hoka's in the past as of late. And one more point on the upper is that the tongue is gusseted, meaning it's connected to the outer wall. Hopefully you can see that there in that shot. I like it. It helps keep the tongue in place uh, right on top of your foot so it's not sliding around at all. And moving on to the midsole of the Hoka Mach 3. So that 22 millimeter and 17 millimeter, we're not gonna put this into the maximalist category. I would say it's more that middle of the road with respect to the stack height on this midsole. So if you prefer a Hoka shoe that has a lot of midsole protection for your feet and your legs, this, you know, again, this might not be the shoe for you. It's their ProFly midsole foam. That's the name of it, ProFly. There it is on your screen. Also on this midsole, it's that classic Hoka Meta Rocker midsole. So think of, imagine a, a rocking chair. So just back and forth, heel to toe, heel to toe. That's what they're going for. All right, but now what are my real gut reactions on the ride of this Hoka Mach 3 midsole? Slight situation, everybody. It's a little dense, a little firm through the landing. I was a little shocked. And you know what I was wishing for? I was wishing for, like I, probably many of you out there, I was wishing for like a 90, 95 degree Fahrenheit day here in Denver to test this midsole out in warmer temperatures. It wasn't freezing out today, but it was a little chilly. And I was just thinking, man, I wonder after like two or three miles in a 90 degree day, would this midsole just get a little softer? You know what it was not like? It was not like the Hoka Rincon. I love the Hoka Rincon ride and midsole. And uh, so it did not feel like the Rincon ride. It made me a little sad. I was hoping for a little softer landing through that midsole. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's not a soft landing at this point. Now, who knows? Maybe after 20 or 30 miles, the midsole will start to open up a little bit and become a little softer. For that outsole, pretty basic. It is a rubberized foam meaning there's a little bit of protection there on that outsole. It does have a, a decoupled groove from basically the heel halfway down the shoe to that to the midfoot essentially. And I don't know, like I don't I'm a little concerned and I'll just don't jump into this now. I'm a little concerned about the durability of this shoe. I'm predicting that 300 to 400 mile range as far as how long the midsole will last just because there is no other rubber on this outsole to help protect uh, protect it from and today you know I, I didn't I was running in a lot of snow and slush but I can imagine after uh, three to four hundred miles that this outsole would start to wear out pretty quickly for the fit I went true to size I'm glad that I did it fits well just keep in mind the width of that toe box slight issue with my pinky toe uh, for the comfort very comfortable upper I enjoyed the upper uh, the midsole ride I don't know I don't know I'm up in the air right now I'm hoping that it opens up a little bit and I'm just gonna go right into the positives and negatives what I've already said the positive is the uh, the comfort of the upper and the drawback is that firm landing who, who knows man I wish maybe I should fly to like maybe I should who who lives in a warm place I need to come visit and take out this shoe and maybe a couple others that I'm just I want to test out in warmer temperatures just to help loosen up that you know what I would do I would place the shoe out in the sun for like 10 to 15 minutes just to soften it up a little bit because right now it's just feeling a little too uh, a little too dense for my liking and actually one last point in the first uh, two to three minutes running in the Mach 3 today I was yearning for some Spenco inside the shoe. You know, the cushioning that I use in some of my shoes, there it is, just a little extra cushion. I was like, oh, where is my Spenco? Because I felt it immediately like, oh boy, this is gonna be a little bit of a hard ride. So how will I use this shoe moving forward and who is it best for? I'm gonna say I'm a little confused about how to, I don't know, I, I honestly don't know. My, my thought is tempo day, but at the same time, I would, I would lean toward the Rincon for a tempo day at this point. And also, where is it? Where is it? Where I think it's inside. I would absolutely choose the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel for a tempo day over the Mach 3 at this point. I know some people use it for their long run shoe. Again, for me, 
I need a little more cushion in my long run shoe. So I'm a little up in the air. Like it's, and I, if I had to pick one right now, I would say leaning toward a Tempo Day shoe for that price point, $140. I'm thinking it's a little high, everybody. I'm, I'm a little happier at that 125 mark for this shoe. Again, it's just my first impression run. Maybe it'll change after 50 miles. Uh, and I will say it's a little bit of a question mark if we will get to 50 miles in this shoe. I like it a lot. I, I, as far, I, like, I like the upper. I'm just struggling with that midsole. It's just a little too firm right now. I, I would definitely buy the Rincon over the Mach 3 at this point. Now, in conclusion, I'm not giving up on the Mach 3. I think it has potential. I kind of wish it was summertime right now in Colorado so I could test it out in warmer temps, but I do know some people are using this shoe for their half marathon racing. And I think I think it has potential. It is responsive. I felt it today, like even though it's a little bit of a firm landing for me, uh, I did feel responsive through the gate cycle. So overall, not giving up. We shall see if we take it to 50 miles. I'll do my best to get it there. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at with this shoe. All right, everyone, question of the day. What is your go-to long run shoe or tempo day shoe right now. Remember a couple days ago we talked about this topic on the vlog, kind of building out your uh, your running shoe rotation, how my strategy for doing that. If you haven't seen that vlog, a lot of people are watching it. So upper right hand corner, you can check that out. But that'll be interesting to hear as we enter into 2020, what people are choosing for their long run shoe. And if you just want to choose one, that's fine as well. Long run shoe or Tempo Day Shoe. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching on this fine day. Simple Sunday vlog. And we're onward and upward to a new week starting week five today of my marathon training. Cannot wait. All right, everyone. We're going to toss it back on the right to the Hoka Running Shoe playlist. That'll be on the right Hoka Running Shoe playlist. And then on the left, we'll toss it back to the Hoka Rincon full review. The Hoka Rincon full review. The review that'll be on the left. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.